they're also very important players. I was thinking about this last night, Jody. Could you imagine if Devontae Smith sprains his ankle, high ankle sprain in this game? Yeah, you got to go into a playoff game with no Devontae Smith and Wes Watkins as your number one and Jalen Rager's your number two and Greg Ward's your... I mean, I, I don't want him near the field. I think of all the players on this team, I was thinking about it, I don't want him near the field. And the countdown to Eagle Weekend action is not as far as it usually is. Saturday action against the Dallas Cowboys coming to town. And I'm still not sure exactly what the game is going to look like. We would hope that you'd have a better guess with only uh, 20 some odd hours to go. John McMullen, my partner, how about the coach clinging to his competitive advantage? Yeah, Damn, he loves well, that competitive advantage. He, he really does. That's what, you know. It's it's tremendous, uh, uh, very advantageous, as we were discussing before the show, Jody, uh, in a meaningless game to uh, not tell everybody who's playing. And look, I don't get it, but it's one of his things. Uh, he's talked about it all year, you know, dating back to real issues where, you know, Where's Landon Dickerson going to start right guard or left guard after Isaac Samala went hurt, uh, got hurt, things like that. But um, this stuff doesn't affect the other team. I, I mean, the Eagles know that from playing all these goofy machinations of teams with they don't know who the quarterback's going to be to the day before the game because of COVID. They've been through it all from the other end of the spectrum and we asked them the questions well how do you prepare you don't know and they said it's about us you you don't you don't focus on it you just prepare they have an offense they they're going to run they're going to have a dna whatever you want to call it a scheme you just prepare for that well what do you think the other team does is doing when I, you're keeping your cards close to the vest coach Sirianni of course they're handling it the same exact way that you do yeah so it's uh, you know I kind of let it roll off my back because as I said everybody's got their things that's one of his things he's latched on the competitive advantage pretty early this season and he hasn't come off it and he believes these things are an advantage I, I, I don't agree with him but uh, you know if it makes him feel better it's like a sugar pill if it makes him feel better uh, you know what's the harm and, oh, by the way, there's no real downside no. to playing your cards close to the vest and not telling anybody what you're going to do. Are you gathering, garnering a major competitive advantage? You don't think so. I don't think so. But Sirianni seems to think so. And if he wants to misguidedly continue to believe that, it's not like he's hurting the Eagles at all by doing so. Yeah, he's just bothering guys like you and me who do this yeah. for a living, who would and, uh, like and, to have something of substance to talk about rather than, well, we don't really know who the Eagles yeah. are going to play. And when you take that sugar pill, it's not going to hurt you, uh, you know, but it, it's not going to help you either. <laughs> Unless it is from a mental standpoint, maybe he gets it, maybe he gets something from a mental standpoint. Maybe that's uh, the positive of it, but uh yeah, the Dallas Cowboys aren't sitting around hand wringing, uh, worrying about who the Eagles are going to sit, who they're going to play, and and by the way, from Dallas's perspective, it, it's starting to look like uh, somebody talked some sense into Jerry Jones as well, because all of a sudden, you know, key players aren't going to play for them as well. Micah Parsons, we talked about the COVID list. Teron Smith, they didn't do it early like the Eagles did, so they're those guys are you know, almost a hundred percent to be ruled out. And, and, and so, you know, when you start to talk about, okay, you're not going to play your left tackle or why are you going to play your right tackle? Why are you going to play Zach Martin, a hall of fame, right guard? Why you know, you start talking about that. And I think ultimately we are going to get sort of a preseason environment. Again, it can't be preseason because you don't have the 80, 90 men to rely on. So certain guys do have to play, but um, so maybe that'll be the most interesting part uh, to see who Nick Sirianni does rest completely and who 
has to go out there and play. I think it's self-evident. I mean, guys, you know, veteran players, you know how they know how to prepare and they know they're going to be ready. The Jason Kelsey's, the Fletcher Cox's, <clears throat> as I said with Kelsey though, because of the consecutive game streak, you, you might want to keep that going. If you get him back up the COVID list, um, so there's interesting little tweaks throughout the roster, but the most important part is the quarterback. And maybe, maybe to me at least, maybe Devontae Smith, because they're young players and they need to continue to grow, but they're also very important players. I was thinking about this last night, Jody. Could you imagine if Devontae Smith sprains his ankle, high ankle sprain in this game? Yeah, you got to go into a playoff game with no Devontae Smith and Quez Watkins as your number one and Jalen Rager's your number two and Greg Ward's your – I mean, I, I don't want him near the field. I think of all the players on this team, I was thinking about it, I don't want him near the field uh, uh, against the Dallas Cowboys. That's just my personal. Opinion. Yeah, the, the drop-off from his level of performance – to his replacement's level of performance might be greater than anyone on the Philadelphia Eagles. Doesn't mean he's the best player on the no, Eagles, no. but the person you would have to plug in to replace him, the differential between those two might be the greatest. I think you're absolutely right. Um, you mentioned about uh, potential mental advantage. Did Nick tip his hand a little yesterday? Because he was talking about, hey, it's all about the process. It's what we do. It's the fact that we've been doing this the entire season since training. And these guys come mentally prepared every single day. It's not like, hey, I got a chance to play this week, so maybe I'll go a little bit harder. <clears throat> Ooh, got a chance to play this week. Is he referring to backups when he says something like that? Guys who don't get many snaps, all of a sudden getting that many more snaps it's the closest thing we've come to getting Nick Sirianni to say, yeah, I'm not playing all my starters. Certain guys are going to be out in this game. They'll be on the bench. They'll be in COVID protocol. We won't rush them back. Whatever the situation is, he kind of tipped this out a little bit. He wouldn't give us exact numbers. We want to know exactly how many guys. Give us a list, yeah. Coach, so we can look at it. Who's playing, who's not, who's playing some, who's coming out early. He's not about to do that, but he did kind of tip his hand yesterday in his uh, meeting with you guys. Well, that's interesting, Jeff. First of all, let me let me give you kudos for listening to that because Nick was filibustering yesterday. I mean, he was going on and on and on, and it was easy to turn out. I think, you know, in 15 minutes, he answered about four questions. So uh, he was just deflecting left and right. So, yeah, good, good for you picking up on that. Uh, yeah, I, I mean – <laughs> they're playing the and by their playing i mean the young guys and and if the veterans do play it's going to be for a a very short period and then you're going to see the milton williams of the world and the zach mcpherson's and 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 such and so forth and it's not a bad thing it's a good position to be in you get these guys some good um it's an it's an advantage for their development. Um, I think that makes the most sense. Uh, Nick has brought up in the earlier in the week that he's only faced this circumstance once as an assistant coach when he was just starting out with Todd Haley, who by the way got a job with the USFL. Interesting, he dropped a Todd Haley reference, and then he becomes he's back. He's a USFL coach uh, yesterday. Um, and he, and he mentioned that they they started their guys. So he understands this rest versus rust argument. And I think the league as a whole has changed since that time. I think we, we talked about this in the preseason when we're talking about, okay, who's going to play or going to play? And seemingly more and more and more teams default to, we're not playing anybody because, again, we don't, have the time we once did to prepare like we wanted to so the goal has shifted from preparation almost to let's keep our key guys as healthy as possible for when it really really counts i certainly don't think that's going to change for the postseason which is more important than a regular season if you can get there so i don't see that mentality shifting from the eagles 
And this, by the way, is an organizational decision. This isn't just Nick Sirianni. This is now Arshta Noda. This is Howie Roseman. This is Jeffrey Laurie. This is everybody. This is the sports science people telling them, now, let's do this. Let's do that. Preservation over preparation is what you're talking about here. And, yes, it's become prevalent in the National Football League, even more so in other sports, the NBA. We I had no, if somebody had told me load management uh, 15 <laughs> years ago, I yeah. thought it might have been a trip to the bathroom that you were talking about, as a matter of fact. But now it is a significant sports term that we use a lot more so in the NBA than any other. But why couldn't it be applicable to the NFL? If there is a sport that deserves load management, it'd be the one where there's physical contact, collisions on every single play. That's why I think you could actually use more load management. Than any other sports. So. Yeah, it's interesting the terminology. They don't really use load management in the NFL. They use, you know, if you think about, you know, Fletcher Cox and all the veterans day and Lane Johnson and the maintenance days, they they go that direction. But uh, you know, it's the same thing. It's the same philosophy, and you can thank Greg Popovich for it uh, more than anybody else with the San Antonio Spurs because. You know, they had their great run, and at the end of it, Tim Duncan was getting up there, and Tony Parker was getting up there, and it made a lot of sense. And, you know, oh, by the way, if you spent $300 to see Tim Duncan, uh, you know, you're SOL, as they say, if it was a load management day. Right. And in the NFL, I don't know they spend – uh, that kind of money to go see an interior alignment. Uh, not going to happen. Quarterbacks are a different animal. We all know that. Uh, so the NFL is different that way than the NBA. Star players can come in any position, any shape, any form. Uh, it is uh, it's certainly a different sport, so they can use different terminology. This is, as I, I just called it, preservation more than anything else. You're trying to preserve the health of your players going into the most important games, which is, of course the postseason and you don't want to put them at risk. And that's why I don't think we've got any chance to see Jalen Hurts this weekend. I know he wants to play. No one should be surprised that Jalen Hurts stepped up and said, oh, I'm playing. I want to play. I expect to play. I got to continue to play. Yeah. Well, of course he does. But it doesn't mean he has to play or he needs to play or is going to play. That decision, as you correctly pointed out just a second ago, is an organizational one. This isn't even just Nick Sirianni and his entire staff. This goes from top all the way down. We'll get a vote on this and be able to say some with more power than others. But this is something that's going to be decided by the Philadelphia Eagles. And I can't see a way. Do you, do you see any way Jalen Hurts plays even like one possession? Or do you think he is completely uh, tied to the bench? I could see him playing a possession or two if they want to, you know, introduce him as a starter before the game and get the big, you know, grandiose applause and the standing ovation and all that kind of pageantry and let the fans show their appreciation. Similar to Jason Kelsey, uh, the only way, I, the only reason I think Jason Kelsey is playing is because of his um, his his extensive yeah, yes. uh, that's it. I mean, similar thing. So just from that, I'd leave the door open a little bit uh, for again a series or two preseason like environment, and, and then you would pull them and get the other ovation, um, and that would be more if you decided, hey, let's 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 do that for the whole team. You know, let's have Fletcher out there. Uh, if you let's uh, let's have everybody out there for a couple series and then pull them. I, I could see very small, but very small way of going. I don't think it's worth it, but yeah, you never know. If you put him out there for one series and that's the series he rolls his ankle, how badly are you going to feel about it? I think they are, are very much on the side of caution. And let me ask you about one specific position that they might not even have the choice of what they're going to do. And that's offensive line. Um, they're going to try and get Kelsey up. He's in COVID protocols right now, working under the assumption that he can get cleared by early Saturday. And they know he can go in the game he can get his start. He can play his series. They can get him out of there. Uh, but 
Lane did not practice again yesterday, even though uh, <clears throat> he's not in COVID protocol. Dickerson did not practice yesterday, even though he's not in COVID protocols. Herbig is in COVID protocols. Uh, Jordan Mailata is the only one who got any time on the offensive line as far as the quote-unquote starters go right now. <laughs> did, they, did they split them up? You made a good point earlier saying – well, if you're not going to play your left tackle, why would you play your right tackle? You either play one or the other or both. You don't split them up between the two. What is the Eagle offensive line going to look like after Jason Kelsey comes out, which we're assuming is <laughs> going to be the case? What's it going to look like for the rest of the game? Yeah, it's a good question. You would assume uh, Andre Dillard uh, would start at left tackle or play the majority of time. Uh, Raven Clark at right tackle would be my guess. Um, you know, it, I, maybe the most interesting would be the interior because they have at least, you know, do you play Nate Herbig at center? I think Nate's the one guy who would play, but then again, he got banged up. So right, if he gets um, banged up and you need him to start next week, if you get him hurt and he can't play next week, now you got to be able to replace him with playoff game. Yeah. Does he fall under the same auspices of everybody else? Got to protect the starters at some point, get him out. Or do you expect them to play every snap of the game? He, he, he might only because of the injury, only because he's banged up. I think a normal, if he were healthy, I think he would be one that would be playing. But you do have, you know, they have Brett Todd who, who has been working at center. Um, when Jason has his maintenance days, even when he is practicing uh, and he's been working at center a lot this week, Jack Anderson is there. Sue Pat is the one guy, you know, would play probably left guard. Um, so Jack Anderson can play center. Um, he can play guard. Uh, and then you have the guys on the practice squad and, you know, Coyote, Awasika, you, you could elevate him. He can play guard. He can play right guard. He can play uh, right tackle. Um, Luke Dariga is a center. He's back. He's on the practice squad, so you have those options as well. Um, <laughs> yeah, if they if they run for two hundred yards with with that grouping, you know, let's 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 start the statue. Well, of Jeff and exactly, and uh, for for their offensive line coach. Which, by the way, to run for 200 yards, somebody's got to run. It can't just be the guys up front. Someone actually has to take the ball. And we don't even know who that's going to be yet. Other than we know for sure it's not going to be Miles Sanders. Will Jordan Howard be back off the COVID list? Will Boston Scott be back off the COVID list? Which of the guys are coming up from the practice squad to get some carries? Because you know that's happening. They, somebody's got to replace Miles Sanders. They're not going to go into the game with just Boston Scott and Howard, who was, remember, banged up before he went on the COVID list. So we're looking at at least one practice squad replacement, if not two, for this weekend. All right. Uh, we are the Mac and Mac guys here on Birds 365. It's a football Friday. That means it's time for game day Kratz, our bud from Sports Illustrated. We got dueling Sports Illustrated guys today. McMullen's calling in the whole team. To, it's like up off the practice squad to join them for this weekend's uh, Football Friday show. Ed Kratz will join us coming up in the next uh, couple of minutes. And a little bit later, uh, we'll get a uh, national football guy on uh, to talk about not only the Eagles, but the entire National Football League for this uh, upcoming weekend because yeah we get eagle centric here you know that's the case and it should be because we are birds 365 but a whole bunch of games are going to dictate who's going to be in the playoffs and the like so kind of or from sports Illustrated is going to jump aboard he wrote a uh, complimentary article about the eagles on si.com this week we'll talk to him about that and all the other playoff action but first things first game day kratz ed kratz joins us next here on birds 365 